Um, now, where do you, where do you, what, what's your take on today's metal scene versus, let's say, ten plus years, fifteen plus years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, I've seen it sort of evolve and and, and switch around. To, you know, different styles, different sub styles come in and stuff. And you know, I mean, I, I hate saying sort of up there, but I don't, I don't really have that much of an opinion on it. You know, I mean, it's, I, you know, it's like every other kind of music. Some some stuff I enjoy. Other stuff doesn't really float my boat, you know, and, and that's the thing. But I, I don't want to sort of be judgmental about sort of bands that have come up now or whatever, because yeah. I know it's possible. And that's, that, that, that's, not, that's not the way, that, that's not my way, really, you know. I mean, yeah. I, I, I approve bands do whatever works for them, yeah. uh, and, and, and that's cool. I might not necessarily be a fan of it, but, you know, more, more power to them, you know. I mean, I, the, the way forward for me, really, is just to make. Napalm, I guess, the, the best that he can be, and everything else, it's just kind of, you know, it's a good good luck for people, you know, whatever they need to do, you know. Right. Okay. Um, let's uh, get on to another question. Do, uh, do you ever, I mean, I, I guess you must agree that you guys are the forefathers of Grindcore. Well, I mean, people say that to us, you know, and, and uh, oh, God, it's very nice, you know, it's very flattering, and obviously, you know, I guess chronologically, we were kind of one of the first bands to to condense the style that's known as grindcore. Yeah. But um, I mean, everything comes from somewhere. I mean, we were influenced by, you know, no part of that time was influenced by, you know, metal, but also lots of European and American hardcore as well. You know, from the mid mid eighties to to the late eighties and stuff. So you know. Or it was a variety of influence. So everything comes from somewhere. Napalm just kind of condensed it into something that sounded a little bit new um, at the time, you know. So, so there, there, there you go, really, you know. Um, and, and again, you know, it's very easy to sort of sit on your laurels and and say, yeah, well, you know, people think of us like this and they call us like legendary and stuff like that. But you know, really, in in the big picture, it, it's kind of irrelevant. You know, you're only as good as your next album or, or the gigs that you do, you know, when you're out there and stuff. So that's 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 that that's a positive way forward for me, you know. Okay. Um now in, in today's era, I mean, from where you guys come from, uh, you know, how, how how can you blend the roots of, you know, the hardcore stuff and, and then obviously, you know, with the Bush President Bush in place, you, you know, it must be a, a a pretty good um set of influences for you to, to write in today's times I'd imagine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, he's not the only one in this world, you know. I mean, um, I think, you know, sometimes there's a bit of an oversight. His people direct everything at him. And, yeah, of course, we all know what he's like. No one's... I'm not trying to justify his his whole thing, you know. But, uh, you know, there's other situations, too, that are going on worldwide that are, are contributing to, uh, um, you know, obviously some fairly uh, unsavory things, you know. Um uh, so you know, I try to I try to take a wider view on stuff, you know. But yeah, I mean, people always say that um, you know the best the, the best sort of music and and I guess specifically probably hardcore music um, always comes out when there's a, a Republican or conservative president in power. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah for sure. <laughs> there yep. you go. Yeah. Oh, I've always known that. Um, Okay. Uh, now, regarding where uh, someone like uh, a, a Peta is, like like especially like a Peta too, um, how, how do you fe- how do you feel with where they're at in terms of uh, you know spreading the word out about you know animal rights and that sort of thing, like on the internet? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it, it's a difficult one, really, because you know what going to the the key points of what it's all about. It's about better welfare for animals, you know, and stuff like that generally, and, and also a better perception of, of what animals are, you know, and where they are on this earth and stuff, you know, yeah. that's the whole point. And I think, you know, whilst I agree with obviously most of what the animal rights organisations are trying to do, I think that sometimes there's a more mindful and effective way of getting the message across because, you know, I, I mean, I, I was involved with like the ALF at certain points down in right. years, but, you know, the kind of sort of tactics where you, you know, um, sort of figuratively grabbing people around the throat that's sitting there eating a plate of chicken or whatever, well, that's that's not going to achieve the objective because that's yeah. actually going to turn people away even more. And yeah. surely the whole point of the issue is to get people to, to have a better perspective of animals, you know, and you're not going to do that by, you know, 
sort of strong arming people in general, yeah. you know. So, so there's a fine line. I, I, don't get me wrong, I totally agree with action and direct action and stuff, but it, it's got to be effective and it's got to provide a, an educational perspective, you know, to the whole thing. It, it really has to do that for people to take note, you know. So. Um, okay. Uh, now, one of the things that I'm always interested on is, is about podcasts. Are, are you finding podcasts is a great way to help promote um, your word, as you know, as opposed to just being on a traditional, you know, like TV station, like an MTV or whatnot, where they're censoring. Okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like we're, I mean, we're, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, man, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go for it. Yeah, I was just going to ask about, regardless of where everything stands, uh, obviously, do you find that podcast is one of the most useful ways of getting your message out? I mean, you know what? We haven't really done that many podcasts ourselves independently, yeah. you know, for the website. In fact, we haven't done any really, um, apart from one, I think. Um, I mean, because, I mean, Napalm's so self-contained, you know, in a lot of ways, that uh, it's actually something that we haven't quite got around to yet, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do podcasts here and there for magazines, fanzines, stuff like that, and that's all well and good, but, uh, yeah, I mean, we haven't quite, quite got around to it ourselves. But, yeah, I mean, anything that challenges convention, you know, and the... Yeah just the pure, the pure corporate ways of doing things. I, I'm all for it, man. You know, I mean, of course, I get, that, that goes without saying, you know. Okay. Um, now, now, let's say with, uh, you know, how fast uh, the third world's developing, especially like, a, I will say, you know, Brazil, obviously you guys have played down there in South America and whatnot, and then Russia, yeah. I mean, versus the days you guys started out in, I mean, are, are you finding, obviously, that the crowds are definitely a lot, not only say bigger, but it's just, it, it just words somehow getting out on you guys in those kind of countries. 